this is Robert Estrid here at Living Pianos. I'm in the control room of our studio, and I want to show you today a little bit about how to record the piano. This is a really deep subject, and I'm going to give you some pointers. So let's go into the studio. And uh, this is the recording room here. And recording piano is a very, very deep subject. And today I'm just going to give you tips and kind of an overview of what the process is about. Because uh, later on, I might even make a, a video course on this subject because it's really deep. There's so many different sounds you can get out of a piano. And the, the thing is with a piano, sound comes out of many different parts of a piano. And so then you have to be able to think about, do you want the sound uh, of a, the lid, what's coming out of the lid, what's coming out of the underneath. There's so many different possibilities and how many mics to use. There's so many questions about how to record a piano. So here's the long and short of it. I'm going to first start with a, a reality about recording versus hearing things uh, with your ears. There's a fundamental difference. And one way that can be demonstrated is if you've ever, um, you're in a room, let's say, and it's a party, and there are a lot of people around, and you can focus in on one person or another person in, in, around the room. You can, you can kind of zero in on different conversations. Now, you could take a, an excellent pair of microphones. Like, I got a pair of Neumanns here that are really, uh, you know, first-class mics. And you'd think that if you took a great pair of microphones, and then if you were to go ahead and uh, use those and then put a pair of really high quality headphones and do the same experiment in a room with a bunch of people talking that you could do the same thing and zero in on conversations. Absolutely not. It will never work. And you might wonder why. Well, first of all, how that can be achieved is, is a deep subject with multiple microphones and EQ to try to take out different frequencies on different conversations. There are ways in film, for example, that this is uh, able to be achieved. But well, why doesn't it work? Well, your ears, your brain is an amazing machine and it uses all the folds in your ears for the early reflections and the later reflections. And it's able to identify by those minute differences in distance that the um, people are away from you and the directions. That's why you could hear all around you, you know, if with your eyes closed and your head not moving at all, you know, absolutely know if something is coming from in front of you or behind you, not just from the difference in volume, but the difference and tone and the all the reflections your brain analyzes a tremendous amount so this is a fundamental issue and the reason why I bring this up is to talk about recording the piano now if you want to get a more intimate sound you'll go closer to the piano and it gives almost a compressed quality when you get inside a piano you get a very very warm, you know, but if you play loud, then you're going to hear more percussiveness inside the piano. It's just the nature of things. So that's one thing to be aware of. So if you really want to balance uh, on your piano, you, you want to go away from it because, you know, half the sound of a piano comes out from the bottom. So it's always a um, kind of a compromise between getting the detail that you're going to achieve when you uh, record the piano close with close mics compared to when you're farther away, then you get a more balanced tone. So what about the possibility of using multiple microphones? Well, then you introduce a level of complexity with phase cancellation. That is, the sound reaching the further mics it reaches them just late enough that certain frequencies will be 180 degrees out of phase. In other words, the down cycle instead of the up cycle. So you get these comb filter effects and you can try to use time alignment technologies. It gets very complicated very quickly. So here's a tip for you. What I, what I suggest for you is it, it, when you're recording, Here's what you want to do. You want to stand in the room and listen. For example, if you want to hear what it sounds like with a mic at the tail of the piano, put your head at the tail of the piano. You're going to get a really good idea very quickly what it sounds like there. If you want to hear you know, what it sounds like in another part of the piano, move around. We'll also move around the room. You might find a, a certain corner of the room just has a really sweet sound. And maybe that you want to place the mics there. So have somebody play while you're listening. Better than that, Get a pair of mics that you can mount easily on a stand with long cables and headphones. And while somebody's playing, if you have isolated headphones, listen to the sound you're getting as somebody plays with a pair of microphones or even two separate microphones that you move around. There's all kinds of techniques that you can use, but that is one of the best ways you can get an idea of what sounds you're getting out of your piano when you're recording it. 
And it's not a right or wrong. There are many different sounds that you can get depending upon what you're looking for. Generally, closer gives an intimate sound with more action noise. Further away is a more balanced sound. Room acoustics enter into it tremendously, as does the uh, ambient noise. You'll be surprised. You never notice your ventilation system until you record with your mics far away from your piano, and then it's so annoying, your refrigerator or something like that. Test record a bunch of times, and you'll hear what you like. And as I said, later on, I may do a, like more of a, a course in this subject because it's really deep. I was fortunate enough uh, in two ways. First of all, I grew up with recording equipment that I utilize all the time for fun. But secondly, I attended my father's recording sessions from an early age and learned a tremendous amount from those phenomenal Connoisseur Society recordings, which are still available on CD and hold up to the standards of today, and in some ways... They have an artistic element to the production that is really quite rare. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial, this brief tutorial on how to record the piano. Hope it's interesting for you. Again, I'm Robert Estrin here at livingpianos.com in our recording studio. Thanks for joining me. Mm -hmm.